So I decided to try something new and fun on my channel. The idea here is to solve lit code questions or hacker rank or any of those interview kind of questions and solving those questions with my friends here. So this is Emmanuel. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and this is John. <laughs> We're going to be solving questions like the same question together in different programming languages. I'm really tempted to use Python, but I'm going to use JavaScript. I think John will use JavaScript and Emmanuel use TypeScript. They are more experienced in this kind of questions than myself. I, I feel like John has solved every lead code question ever. <laughs> but we're going to be starting with something medium level, which is minimum size sub array sum. We would try to solve this. And then at the end of this video, we would share um, each of our solutions. And uh, hopefully this is a series, something that we can you know do more of from time to time, as many times as I can catch them to do this. But uh, with that out of the way, I think we can begin. <laughs> what? Bro, that's crazy. Why would my test not fail? <laughs> There's a combination of a sliding window. So it's just a sliding window. And I Bro, it's... what? <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, I'm annoyed by the fact that. The first 30 minutes, I was solving the wrong problem. <laughs> yeah, so in the wrong subject. How did I solve this problem? First of all, I made a mistake because I thought you could rearrange the array. So I spent 30 minutes solving it, thinking you could rearrange the array. So it says, given an array of positive numbers, norms, and a positive integer target of a subarray whose sum is greater than or equal to target. If there is no such subarray, return zero instead. So you have three examples. The first example, the answer is in the last two items of the array. The second example is just one because there's already a number in the array that has that is equal or greater than the target and then the last one if you add everything up it's not going to be enough to get to the target so it's zero. First things I usually consider in cases like this is what data structures are provided in this case you have an array and what are we looking for in this case do we need to search the entire array or we could uh, get away with not searching the entire array in this case we can't so that makes my thinking more constrained so because I know I have to scan the entire array I know for sure I have to do at least one loop so that makes it easier for me to think I'm going to do everything else inside one loop at least so that's why i came up with the first loop which is go through each item in the array the output while it says we're returning an integer we still need to uh, kind of generate a sub array so in this case means i need to keep track of another smaller array within this array and one of the best ways to do this is if not the only way is to do is to use a sliding window technique so a sliding window is basically you have two pointers like john mentioned the other time two pointers one on the left and one on the right based on certain conditions Conditions, the window keeps moving. So in this case, the window is the subarray and the output of the solution would be the length of that window. So your job throughout the looping or throughout the first iteration is to reduce the window as much as possible, which is the subarray here. In my solution, I created a total, which is going to be the variable to track if I've reached the target or not. Second variable is the back pointer, which is the left side of the window. And then I, which is the right side of the window, minimum length, which tracks my output. I did this because it's possible that my sliding window keeps moving to the point where I, for some reason, 
I needed to have this mean length which tracks the smallest window I've gotten so far because it's possible that my sliding window by the name sliding meaning it can move to another place and increase in size so I need to keep the shortest window I ever had throughout the solution that's why I have this one so we start with the while loop which is going to go from the first item to the last item so I have num num is to track the current uh, value of the index I'm in and then back num is to track the number on the left side of the window actually norm also tracks the the number on the right side of the window the first thing i do is to increase the total by the current item and then i create this while loop so this while loop here is to reduce the window so the conditions here checks if i've reached my total target so if i've reached my total target that means i'm eligible to reduce the window so i'm trying to reduce the window to see if possible i can if i can reduce the window and also keep my target high so i first check have i reached my target yes can i reduce my window if not then um, i skip this but if i can what i will do is first reduce the total which means total minus the the back number which is the item on the left side of the window and then increase the back pointer which means shorten the window and then set this number again because if i don't it will be from the last number then repeat this process until the window is as small as possible then after that shift the window right yeah. which means move forward so there's this check here that checks if my total is greater than or equal to the target which is my solution is okay yes and my current window is smaller than the last window yeah. which is this main length yeah. if that's the case then set it as the new uh, shortest window yeah. if not then move to the next iteration of this loop by doing this i keep moving moving i keep track of the smallest window i've ever had and get to the last end the last item on the list once i reach there i return this so i first check if i actually reached my target yeah. if i didn't then i return zero if i did return my minimum length so that's that's how i solved it so i think this solution is n i'm not sure if this is log n or, or, or not that should be log n analyze complexity should show you if it's log n yeah, I'm mean, uh, of M. Of M. Ah, okay. I didn't solve it completely, but um, I guess I was on the right track. But but missed like a couple of things. I'm um, at the moment already like refactoring my solution. Essentially, what I had before was, I mean, I first had this check where if the number of items that you had is less than one, meaning the array itself was empty, then just return here. And then I was setting my, I was setting the minimum at first to infinity. The reason is because I want the very first minimum that I get to be automatically like the the lowest and then i'm setting my current sum to be the first number and then i have two pointers which is r and j which in this case would be, uh, act as the um, edges of a sliding window i'm merely setting my current sum as the very first number and then in the uh, this while loop here i'm checking if that current sum is greater than or equal to the target if it is that means we've met our condition and at that point i'm calculating um, checking if that number is um, um, lower than my previous minimum calculated which is j minus i plus one then comparing it with the minimum and then at that point in time i, I then had this very small hack here where i was was checking at, at this point i then want to reduce my sliding window if i've made that condition mm. so i'm checking that while the current sum is greater than or equal to the target i want to reduce my current sum and also increase i that's um make the sliding window smaller and the reason i had this hack here was i found a test case where while i'm reducing the window there is actually a sum that is equal to that target then i would miss it i was doing the same thing i was doing here for calculating the minimum which is at that point if it's equal if it's equal to the target then i would calculate the minimum again but this was also terrible because part of the conditions is if it's greater than essentially so there are a few cases that this was actually still miss uh, but yeah it's the reason why i had this hack here and then i have this check here where so for i is greater than j so if at some point while i'm increasing um i if it gets past j then i want to also move j to where i is at that point in time and then if none of these conditions are met i simply just increase j and also increase the the coin sum that i have yeah then at the end i'm checking if my minimum at like if at any point in time like it's still at infinity meaning i went through all the numbers and they never met the condition meaning i never calculated the minimum then i return zero if not i return the minimum that i calculated uh yeah so that was my solution but yeah there are a few flaws there which um 
we're writing right now. Mm. My own solution, I didn't even know anything like sliding window before this started. My test, I feel like my solution is actually correct. But when they gave me this input here, this long norms input, then I ran out of time. So I got 18 out of 21 test cases. But I believe my solution is correct. Here, I keep track of my mean length and I ensure that my mean length is longer than the array. And I keep it this way because later on, I would want to check if my mean length is greater than the norms of length. So if it is greater, it means that this mean length never changed all through my code, so I can return zero. And if it didn't change, that means there wasn't a target found. But if it did change, then I'm going to return the actual mean length. I loop through the norms array because I need to loop twice when I'm given an input. I need to loop the first time, starting from either here or here or here. Then if I'm starting from here, I can calculate the remaining. With the start index, here I get the start number which is the start index then I get my sum I have my sum variable which I'm going to start from the start norm and then I have this variable called found target I could probably think of this like a hack but I want to know when I have found the target in my sum so here I check if the sum is already greater than or equal to the target that means the mean length is one and this is for example if the target is one and I already found one then the length of the sub array is one I don't need to go further so I continue to the next position if I already get the the targets then I continue but I feel like I don't even need to continue I can just break directly but anyways then here I have my sums array and in this array this is where I keep track of the numbers that I am adding and the array starts from the start norm which is the start position of my loop then I have my second loop here in this loop I have the norm index which is going to be the the, the next index and I start this from the first index after my current start index my remaining condition so it should never be more than the length of the array then I get the current number then I add the current number then I push the current number to that sum array so now this sums array is going to have two items then here i can check if the sum is now greater than or equal to the target then i have found my target which is true and when i found my target i'm going to break out of this loop but if i don't get the target then i go through again until the sum is greater than or equal to the target and if it is never equal to or greater than the target that means found target is still going to remain false then after the for loop i can check if the sums array if the length of the sums array is less than the minimum length and i found the target then the minimum length is now going to be the sums array dot length. So now I have my minimum length, which is equal to the sums array dot length. And I keep looping through to find more lengths. And as the lengths are minimum, then my minimum length variable keeps reducing. Then at the end, I can now check if the minimum length is greater than the norms dot length. That means this is still what the minimum length is. And that means I never actually found a result or a target. So I return zero. But then if I did, then I can return the minimum length. And this worked for all the test cases here. I think because I'm not using the sliding window technique or because this for loop is longer than it should be, it just took more time and I got this time limit exceeded. I wish I could just remove this particular test case and see if the rest works. But again, I believe my solution is correct. <laughs> that was part one. We didn't expect part one to be this long. <laughs> I spent one hour plus on my solution. I think you also spent, everybody spent one hour plus until Emmanuel found the best solution. Uh, and this is even a medium difficulty. But uh, we'll see how other tasks will be. Maybe they're going to be more difficult. I have to learn this sliding with the technique though. I feel like it will come in handy another time. But really, many questions with sliding window. I don't know. I hope you enjoyed the fun part of this, the thinking part of this, and also the solution part of this. I would actually recommend you try out this exercise too. Maybe following the ideas from here or your own solution. The name of the task is minimum size sub array sum 209. Actually, they even gave the <laughs> They, they actually gave it on the question that this is a sliding window category. Yeah. If you don't know what a sliding window is, go learn a sliding window so you can use it in your interviews. And that's it for today's video. Thank you, John. Let the, let the camera people see John. Thank you, John. Yeah. And thank you, Mano, for joining me. And uh, we'll see you again in part two.